right, welcome to Podcadzo. Um, this is will be our should, first episode. Yeah, should we like do an introduction? Th- this is it. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you're good. Um, so yeah, welcome to Podcadzo. This is the uh, official audio companion to the band Cadzo. You welcome to Podcadzo. Um, we've recorded a few episodes already, but this will be the first episode because we haven't done a proper introduction. And we've also officially released our debut self-titled EP, four-track EP. Um, so we wanted to wait until that came out to release an episode um, so we could talk about the EP, properly introduce the band, talk about the songs on the EP, and kind of the process of recording them, and uh, whatever else we want to. Oh, yeah. Does that cover it? I, th- I think so. Um, so today it's just me and Julian. My name's Colin. I'm Julian. And he's Julian. There's a third member of CADZO named Will Benson. Yes. Uh, Will couldn't be here today, and he's not in the other episodes so far. But he's a busy man. He's a busy man. We'll get him in the sodes, um, but he'll be more of an ancillary character in the Cadzo podcast canon. He's like an extra that you get from time to time. Yeah. A bonus. Bonus. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, it's, it's just me and Julian. Um, and then there's Will, too. And uh, three-piece band at the moment. There's the three of us who recorded the EP. And, um, yeah, let's jump right into it. Okay. So, um, we, Julie and I were in a band before Cadzo together. Well, should we go further back? We've known each other forever. Yeah. Since high school. I, I'll go back as far as you want to go back. Yeah, you start. Go back wherever you want to start. Um, okay, well, <laughs> we were in History of Rock and Roll together. Oh. The stalest cliff bar ever. What it's flavor is horrible. it? Horrible. Oh, why does it? It looks like a piece of butter. toffee. Yeah, these are brand new too. Huh? And it's stale. Yeah, it's rock hard. Gross. I'm not gonna eat that. Damn. Do you need something else? No. We've got just, some protein bars. That's right. I'll just drink my beer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's healthy. Uh, well, yeah, we were in a uh, history of rock and roll together. I think sophomore year, maybe freshman year. I can't remember which. Um, Must have been sophomore High school. Year. And that was the first time that I knew that you played guitar. The f- before that, I knew ab- about you, but I, I thought you were like a sports guy. I thought you liked basketball and like football and all that shit exclusively. Yeah, because we went to middle school together too. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> see, um, <laughs> honestly, I don't remember anything. We about both went to school. to Weber, and I was never. I was like kind of a sports guy then. I grew up playing hockey. And you were friends and with some I was jocks. Fr- yeah, I was friends with some jocks. Uh, I dabbled in both crowds, but um, I played. I dabbled in the fat loser crowd exclusively. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I dabbled in the giving swirlies to fat loser crowd. So that's that's actually how we met. (laughs) (laughs) Just joking. I never bullied anybody. No, you're a very nice guy. Um, But yeah, I was a little bit in sports. I didn't really get into music until high school. So I think my first two like really evident memories are, I don't really remember how it got brought up. Maybe you just told the class one day that you play guitar. And I was like, oh shit, you play guitar? And you were like, yeah, I've been like practicing jamming. I thought you were like pretty new to it. Basically, mm. is the roundabout way of saying it. Like, I thought you were a noob. Yeah. And I was like, kind of a egotistical asshole when I was a freshman. So I was like, well, well I've been were, playing music forever. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So fuck and to this be guy. fair, you were noob. you were far beyond my skill set. No, nah, but it's, I think that's the thing. Is <laughs> skipping ahead slightly, but. We'll circle back. When I heard your band Savage Cabbage for the first time, I was like, holy shit, this dude can shred. And I got the vibe that you were like probably the lead songwriter too. So I was like, holy shit, this dude's amazing. Um, but yeah, so back in the history of rock and roll, I remember the first thing we kind of like talked about exclusively or extensively was 
the Beatles because we were talking about the Beatles as a class and you really liked the Beatles and I really liked the Beatles. And so we kind of talked about like a couple things there. And then the next big thing was somehow you two got brought up and mm -hmm. I was like, holy shit, someone else my age who likes you two and like respects you two that's like pretty hard thing to find, especially in high school people like willing to admit that they <laughs> yeah. like you too. Uh, so I definitely remember talking about that and just being like, holy shit, this dude knows his music. Like he's very musically educated and also has good opinions. I, in, I think about music. Uh, so that was like the earliest memory I really had of us. Like, I think kind of like gaining a step towards like knowing each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, next thing I really tangibly remember is playing shows with you and really like watching Savage Cabbage and also just kind of like appreciating your musicality and your musicianship at a young age. But also at that point in time, your guys' drummer, Nathan, mm -hmm. was someone who I in a lot of ways really like aspired to play like and have the energy of on stage. So you guys kind of as that collective like really – stuck out in my mind in high school as being like super super talented dudes and yeah i'll stop talking and kind of let you no, thanks, man. give your two cents on all that shit yeah um because i remember you from middle school and i remember like i i we must have like at least said hey or something at some What's point up? in middle school because yeah. i remember like feeling like friendly with you when we started high school and you're definitely like a dude i wanted to be better friends with um, especially since I knew that you played drums, but I knew you were like really good at drums, and I felt uh, I don't know if intimidated is the right word. Cause, Me and Chris uh, Lay did the <clears throat> talent show in eighth grade at Weber, so maybe yeah, that's, that might I shout do out remember Chris that. Lay. Yeah, fucking love that dude. Now I remember watching. I was like, fuck, <clears throat> these guys are gonna get so many chicks. At <laughs> <laughs> we got zero chicks, just for the record. Um. Yeah, and then I do remember the history rock and roll class. I remember we would sit next to each other kind of often. We just started. Yeah, like uh, almost every day. Yeah, uh, starting up a friendship then. And then you were obviously in a band, our sort of companion band in high school. We played a bunch of shows together, Blue Taboo. And I was um, really good friends with Jared Jansen, who's the, who's the singer of that band. And um, so yeah, we played a bunch of shows together. Um, I feel like we did we jam it all together in high school. We must have like so, at some point. You guys, I can't. It's gonna really bug me. I can't remember the name of the song. You had, you might remember the name of it. You had one song that was in seven four. Yeah, and I was obsessed with it. It was yeah. such a good song and it had such an interesting riff too. And it opened up and was like heavy. Mm -hmm. Um, and we played on the rocks at Rocky yeah, together, yeah. and we both. We played, I played, I can't remember if anyone else from Blue Taboo played with you, but I played with you guys on that, on song, that song just because I was like, this song's fucking sick. Please let me like jam with you guys and you guys let me. I don't think we practiced at all. No. I think it was that fully improvised. To your skill but no, I'm pretty there. sure it was and pretty, play a seven pretty sure it was pretty bad. But like, no, you guys released you guys released it on an EP and I listened to it a lot. So I uh yeah, no, that song was always really captivating to me at a young age but anyway sorry no no that's cool yeah that that was a prouder uh moment in my young songwriting careers when i successfully wrote something in seven four that i thought was like a little bit listenable um <laughs> yeah anyways cut to after high school you know people go their separate ways um i had moved to nashville for a little bit came back uh, to Fort Collins for college and started playing with um, a buddy then. And we brought you in for a little bit, jammed then in college, I remember, and it was a ton of fun, but nothing ever really came of like that. Only We're two or like, three weeks. Yeah. Was it just, you know, everyone was busy and doing their own thing and stuff. Yeah. And then... Um, we also didn't have like our own space we were borrowing no space. yeah we're borrowing my dad's big big thing too yeah um so yeah then cut to well 2020 i released an ep with um my friend keaton nelesny 
and we formed the band Wax Romantics. And it was just kind of a studio project for a little bit, just me and Keaton jamming. And um, then uh, we wanted to play shows. I really, like, from the beginning of, of Wax Romantics, I had you in mind to, like, once we actually do, like, live drums and stuff, I want to get Julian in. So then, some point, like, early 2021 is when we started jamming I, together in Wax. Apart from you allegedly wanting me to be your drummer, I slid into your DM. Yeah, you also hit me up. After which, you released your second EP with mm-hmm. Wax Romantics, and I said, hey, man... I'll do anything to play for you guys. <laughs> if you ever do shows, if you need a drummer for like one gig, like hit me up. I'm your guy. Yeah, which was serendipitous because I, I, and I think I told you, I was like, dude, I like already wanted to jam with you. Like at that point, it was still obviously the pandemic and shows weren't happening or anything. Um, so towards like early 2021 is when it started to make sense. So that's when we started jamming together as Wax. Um, and then from there, we started this project, Cadzo. Yeah, which um, I think uh, maybe just to sum it up nicely, we were both kind of just looking for a side project that was like mm-hmm. kind of in a totally different vein from Wax Romantics because in a lot of ways I had always wanted to like be in a group with you and I feel like you had always wanted to be in a group with me and yeah. we'd always had like kind of maybe certain preconceived ideas about what that group would be mm-hmm. and wax just kind of wasn't really that group yeah and this i think we both just feel like we can fully commit to like a lot of the original like ideas that we brought to the table to yeah begin with so definitely this you know um very proud of what we did in, in wax romantics but um this from the beginning has felt like uh more natural and um just more like the, the type of music I've, I've been wanting to play. Yeah, so. and also just more, uh, I think I really appreciate in a lot of ways, I kind of feel like this has more of a, a DIY kind of mm-hmm. attitude and nature about it where yeah, we've been very much, or I mean, I should say you have really like done all this pretty much by yourself and we've done we've been in-house like from everything to the mixes to the artwork like all of it's just been yep stuff that we made like for ourselves so yeah we've done pretty much everything out of this basement that we're in right now yep kelsey did you paint the picture down here oh yeah yeah well so shout out really quick i guess uh she's sitting behind us you probably can't see her but kelsey did the inst or sorry not the Instagram art she did the art for the EP mm-hmm. um, Which kind is on of Instagram too yeah I was gonna say she has an art Instagram it's Kelso Art right so go follow go Kelso follow Art but she made this painting like totally independently of us making the EP I'm pretty sure yeah. it was just a painting that she made and then we asked her to like make a bunch of other paintings that were kind of similar to this painting but different color palettes and stuff. And we wound up thinking this one was the coolest Mm -hmm. and it definitely is. And I think in a lot of ways it fits the like attitude and the spirit of the EP like perfectly. So shout out Kelsey. An entire night, Kelsey, I, before I'd go to bed, I'd listen through the tracks and just stare at the picture, (laughs) the painting on my phone. And I'd be like, I think this works. I think this works. And after duty on the next night, like maybe I was just tripping last night. Maybe it doesn't work, but it works. Yeah, it works yeah. super good. It's a great, great uh, painting, and yeah, it fits the songs really well. So we're happy with that. Um, but anyways, so I think it was we're recording this um, May second, twenty twenty three. I think we first got together to like jam, it, like outside of wax. Um, November of 2022. Yep. So the pictures I have from the first drum session, and I think only drum session. Yeah. Uh, we did two separate days. Okay. I think we knocked out a pretty strong majority of the songs in one day. But mm-hmm. any, anyway, uh, the first camera 
or the first picture I have in my camera roll is November 2nd. So yeah. I think we had jammed maybe only like two like or three times prior. yeah because yeah. we, we well and a lot of the songs i guess it should be clarified a lot of the songs had existed previously but were not songs mm-hmm. that I, yeah were being i had used the I, anything they just existed mm-hmm. i had the ideas for the riffs for for two of the songs for um boy on the outside and target market um that I had shown you a couple times, but yeah, they never turned into anything. Um, so yeah, we started jamming those and yeah, it came together pretty quickly. And uh, it just felt like a natural step to like record them, put yeah. on an EP before doing anything else. Definitely. And I think the songs that are on the EP are in a lot of ways kind of super different from the songs that exist now that we're working on so i think they capture like a moment in time that is cool but yeah. they're definitely not like a. it's not like a hey this is what Cadzo sounds like kind of it's not like a mixtape it's definitely just like a one-off kind of ep mm-hmm. thing so yeah yeah um well should we just jump right into it and play one of the, the tunes sure i'm down all right um i did also want to say one interesting thing or one thing I find interesting about the recording for this process was, uh, I mean, all the mixes were like essentially done and completed, and then Will Benson. Yeah, oh yeah, we sh- we should retract everything. Yeah, let's let's talk about that before we get into the, so the songs. Yeah, all these songs existed in like a totally different form, and were largely all done like by Colin. So he recorded bass, guitar, and all of the synths and kind of like patty sounds and layers and things like that. And then we were jamming the songs with Will to teach him the songs and get like a live set going. And all the parts that he wrote wound up being like, no offense to you, but they wound up just being a lot more like intricate and well thought out. Yeah, because Will's an part. amazing keyboard player, yeah, and I can't play keys at all. Yeah, his instrument is keys, and he specializes in building sounds and stuff. So mm-hmm. he was just a really good fit for all the songs as they existed. So he wound up tracking over all of the original mixes, and then you remixed everything and it wound up being like a completely different EP after that. None, none of the yeah. songs sound even like remotely the same to me now. Yeah, because so just say, I had key ideas for the songs from the beginning. Um, basically just doubling my guitar part with keys. And then we did a few rehearsals down here with my brother, Cam, thinking he might play keys in the band, but he's too busy Forgot with about the that. shit he's doing. Yeah. Um, so Cam couldn't be in the band. So you and I were talking one day and we're like, we need a, a new key player. And you're like, well, Will might be interested and just called him up right then. I was like, hey, you want to jam tomorrow? He's like, yeah. And he showed up and um, we just showed him the, the songs down here, played them over the speakers. And um, he like immediately picked them up and made them way better. And at that point, we thought we had the recordings pretty much done. Yeah. Finalized. Um, so that was like what, January of this year? Probably. Couple, a few months ago. And I think after a couple times of jamming with Will, we were like, dude, can you just like retrack all the keys on the recordings? And he did it in like two weeks. Yeah. And they were at his house. Great by at his house. Yeah. He was just emailing me stems. He was like, what do you think of this? And I maybe only gave him one note for all the key parts he submitted. Um, so I've just put them in the sessions and mixed them and. Yeah, yeah, that was the song. So we we probably finished the recordings with Will, like early April, and we just or early early, early March, March, early March. Yeah, we we're just kind of sitting on them for a while, um, waiting for a good release, and also yeah. trying to dial in not dial in the art, but I think we were trying to find better art than what we had. Yeah, we just come up with some it. idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, Shout out Will because. Will his talent and the way that he approached the CP is like, yeah, a testament to how just amazing he is at his instrument, how devoted he is like to his craft. Yeah. 
and he's such a rad dude. And um, super nice it guy. was so like fun and refreshing, just the three of us like playing music together and just messing around. And it was like the first time in a while where I've just like jammed with dudes and it's been fun. Yeah, we let loose. And let and loose. It was and a good time. It wasn't like yeah. just a weird. And I was able to like mesh musically with Will right away. And um, I think that was more him lowering his standards to, to mesh with me. But <laughs> No, I don't think so. I think, I mean, just being on the outside of it, you guys are both like super music, musically like inclined and you have really good attention to detail. I think you both care like immensely about the parts that you're playing. Mm -hmm. It's not just like, oh, I'm just going to, come up with something and it'll be good enough like it's very focus driven on both of your guys' parts and so i think it helped a lot that when we presented him the songs and when we were showing him the songs you knew like exactly what you were doing through every part of every song and like able to just coach him through it and he also is a super duper quick learner like yeah i mean i used to play music with him a bit more and i mean he can sight read and he he can pick up on a key like almost instantaneously he can read chord structures so like he can do anything um and yeah you're a good teacher so i think it just worked out well what was nice is i was able to export the midi parts in my daw to sheet music i can't i can't i can read music technically but it takes me like fucking hours so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was luckily able to give Will sheet music to read off of, and yeah, he basically like sight read it. Yeah, and uh, it was very impressive. And what's nice about Will that works with me is I think he's like kind of pattern oriented when it comes to music, like I am, and like very much thinking about parts and yeah. structure. He's super good at which makes it easy to it down, communicate. To structure. Yeah, because a lot of people I've played with like don't think about music that way. And it makes it harder to communicate like parts and songs to them and stuff. So anyways, Will's the man. We'll get him on a pod here soon, hopefully. Yes. We'll talk about and, something uh, that he wants to talk about. Yeah. Video, <laughs> video game music. Yeah. yeah. Weird, nerdy composition shit. <laughs> theory. Theory. Uh, <laughs> we'll do a theory episode. Theory. Who needs it? All right. Well, do you want to jump in, I guess? Yeah. So I think we're just going to play um, the EP track by track. And uh, we'll stop we'll, and talk. Yeah, we can stop mid song. And if you're, if one of us has something to say, and uh, yeah. So let's start with the first track, which so, is called Dark Park. Yes. Uh, Dark Park. And I guess uh, it's not uncommon for this to be done, but I use like a different setup for all the song, each song, I changed setups for each song. And uh, for Dark Park, my goal was to use like as little as possible. So I only did like snare, rack, floor tom, and then one cymbal and the bongos. So and it sounds fucking wicked. That's what we're going for here. the drums in this room and the room was fully untreated yeah Julian sat right there this kit not the six I mean, different kit a different kit yeah. <laughs> some distortion on my voice here the first time I've really done that so sorry what I've been meaning to ask this for a while this song is like super different from anything you've ever made before uh -huh. what and in, what inspired this what were you thinking so um 
I like how this song came about. I bought a keyboard from a friend of mine, or he gave it to me rather because he was moving. And um, it was this cool, like full size 88 key Casio keyboard that I put in my room at home. And uh, it has like drum loops on it. So I just played a simple drum loop. And that pattern, the bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. was the uh, the first thing I just played on it. I have no idea. It just It was like a fun pattern to play on the on the Blackies. And uh, so I just started playing that. And it was fun to play, kind of mesmerizing. I was like, oh, maybe that could be a song. Um, so I recorded it into Da and then um, just fucked around for a while with the guitar part just had a bunch of different guitar ideas and I finally found that simple, you know, bam, 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 bam. Um, kind of like, I was going for like a Johnny Marr Smith thing as I often do. <laughs> and uh, um, so I, I never thought it'd be, like I was just kind of treating it as like a, a little fun project uh, to do. Um, but one day I was like, maybe I'll give vocals a shot. And uh, in, so, I'll step back here. I'm not a, a gifted singer. I've never been a singer. Um, when I played in in you know the bands in high school and Savage Cabbage, I was just a guitar player. I never really had aspirations to sing. I started singing Wax Romantics just because I was the only person around when I first started to write those songs to sing, and I was trying to come up with vocal ideas. And so then I kind of find... I found a vocal style that that worked well enough for me and for the songs, and it was kind of like a more baritone vocal style. I was kind of going for like a national thing a little bit at first, um, like Matt Berenger thing. And um, that's more or less like the vocal style used in Wax Romantics. So when I started working on this song and when Cadzo started coming about, I started to think of like, you know, different ways I could sing. So... Um, I was listening to a lot of the strokes at the time. I was just revisiting that first album. And I loved the vocal sounds on Julian Casablanca's vocals, like the really distorted, um, compressed vocal sounds on, on the first album. And so um, I just found like kind of a cool distortion um, vocal chain I could use. And I just spent like a couple hours in my room just like fucking around with it and trying different vocal parts and I just started singing that and I was like surprised that it kind of worked with the song because um, to be honest when I was doing it I was kind of embarrassed that I was singing that way and like go <laughs> going for it like that that's um, when it pays off the most is when you are slightly embarrassed in the studio yeah yeah I like the the take like with those lyrics and with the, the vocal style I use I maybe had like two or three takes of that. Never thought I'd use them, but I just kind of, over the next couple of days after I recorded it, started listening to the the tracks a little bit more and I was like, this really kind of works and I, I like it. Um, and we were working on it already because I, I, I think at that point when you started tracking drums, when I showed it to you, I wasn't for sure if I wanted it to be a, an actual song. Um, but, you know, I just... I, I thought it'd be cool for you to play drums on it and maybe it'd just be a little side project from the side project. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, I finally got the, the courage to send you a demo with the vocals and I, I think you liked it. And Yeah, I think, I mean, I liked, I liked the song, but also didn't necessarily see it as being like a song that would be for like release, uh -huh. like an A an A side song. But as soon as you did bounce the one with the vocals, I was like, oh yeah, no, this is definitely gonna be a song. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and um, I I thought, you know, it's kind of crazy that it's the first song on the EP it went from like being a song I never thought I would show anybody to being the first song on the EP. But I thought it was cool to put first because it's kind of you know, like for us, an ambitious song and I think shows, uh, it's kind of like a, a mission statement right up front. Like it's very much in your face. It's heavy. Um, and yeah. It's a complete like atmospheric and like tonal shift. I feel like from anything else that 
we had done together before and probably that we've done together since. Yeah. Um, with the exception of like a couple newer songs which have like a little bit of that heavier like edge. But mm-hmm. this one has like a definitely like a very unique darkness to it. Um, yeah. It, just a very characteristic sound. And also we'll keep playing it in just a sec, but um, I did just want to say the part that I think cemented it as being like the opening track was really like when Benson had yeah. his shit. It was like, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> yeah, it was rad. So it all started with the the Casio keeper. Like I said, it was that was just something I was fucking around with on them. So I had the very basic piano part and the, the intro part where I just kind of run down that scale. Um, I was just fucking around on the keyboard again one day and playing a scale and found that pattern. Well, that was kind of cool. It's in the same key as that other pattern I was playing. Could I make them work together? And uh, I didn't think they would, but I thought it kind of sounded cool to, you know, start with that as an intro, add in the drums, and then everything comes in together. So Will then, I, I showed him that. He learned that little intro part right away and played it way better than I could. And then, um, you know, found a way better sound for the key part um that he sent me and then he added in a bunch of the the cool riffs that that we hear at the beginning um so yeah will took it to another level that that's true that is really what cemented is like this is a good song this is definitely a a fucking opening level track Mm -hmm. uh how many just last question how many songs usually percentage wise would you say you start on keyboard and then carry Mm -hmm. over to guitar this might have been the first one actually it's interesting yeah 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 no that's a good question it's definitely the first time i've like written a guitar part for a key part a that i already had yeah it's cool yeah it's maybe that's why it's just yeah so sonically different all right shall we keep going let's keep going all right we're like halfway through the song right now yeah it's a short one <laughs> There's a Benson riff right there. It's probably the hardest I played drums right there. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I really intentionally pushed the compression on this one. You have the wood blocks on this too, which I love. I think it's just a rim click. Oh, I think he used the wood blocks on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. The... Good old wood blocks. Yeah. The vocal is what the vocal's so good on that because it's so just like fearless and careless. It's just like really above above the mix in such a good way. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, it was... Um, I think you've developed, like, obviously, because you haven't been singing as, like, a front man for super long, you've developed, like, a really good characteristic sound in, like, not that much time, which is really hard to do, especially when you're doing it all by yourself and you're just like, man, is this shitty or is this good? Yeah. But, yeah, you've you've definitely found, like, a super good, unique voice, which is sick. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah that... Like, I made the choice somewhere along the way in the past, I don't know, year or so that, like, I'm not that interested in singing really well. I'd rather, like, just have a cool voice that fits the song. It's a storytelling voice. Yeah. Um, Because, you know, not not to compare myself to anybody because I'm not close to, like, any of these vocalists that I'll mention, but all of my favorite vocalists, with the exception of Morrissey, maybe, 
are not like traditionally la, la, yeah. la. <laughs> are not like traditionally or classically trained singers or even yeah. good singers um and uh i think i know. agree with that like I, we probably share that we both yeah. like super unconventional vocal styles yeah like my um my favorite singers i know you're gonna cringe at this julian but liam gallagher I mean, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, Joe Strummer and um, well, I mentioned Morrissey already, but I mean, you mentioned Matt Berenger, and I feel like he's yeah. super prominent, just in the sense that you know his singing style is not necessarily linear. It's definitely way more of like a storytelling pattern, and I think that's something that I hear in your vocals a lot. Is they're not pattern or like rhythm driven. They're very much like, yeah, they're going to be inserted when they maximize the ability to tell the story. Oh, and how could I forget to mention Damon Auburn? Cause I think he was maybe for like the way I'm trying to sing on that song, potentially the biggest inspiration of, um, like blur Damon Auburn, early blur Damon Auburn is what I'm talking about. Balls to um, the walls. Yeah. And it's a very like kind of, talky vocal style um but anyways enough about my singing um let's talk about your drums on that song so fucking <laughs> wicked i think in a lot of ways my approach for that song was to do heavy shit be heavy but also incredibly light in the footing as in just being simplistic not doing anything crazy with the exception of maybe like just trying to do a lot of fills in like the 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 bridge part um but like in the verses it's really just a four on the floor as like uh f as feel inducing as possible rather mm -hmm. than being like technical but which is needed because it really carries the song definitely and it, it gives a, a basis for that kind of funky um, almost syncopated well, keyboard it's part. It's almost like harder for me in a lot of ways to do that to do that shit and feel like I'm doing it well. Like I can write relatively not complex parts, but just parts that have more notes and more fills. And I think it's way more challenging for me to step back and say, "Hey, this song really just needs to feel amazing." and making a song feel amazing with not that many notes or fills is like truly pretty difficult to do. So I think mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to do it for this group specifically. Cause it was, if we're talking about trying to do things that we've never done before, step outside of our comfort zones, that's definitely something I want to do more is just be a pocket drummer. Um, and I honestly like, I don't know if Kelsey remembers this, but when we were starting to do Cadzo, I was trying to listen to a lot of what I've, felt were like pocket drums just sim simplistic kind of like loop pattern drums that purely like exist to give more to the guitar parts and the vocals so I, yeah. and that's what i tried to do yeah. for that song specifically no it's very in the pocket and um but you're like all the skins are in the pocket, but then it feels like you're doing some like nice twinkly stuff with the symbols. Yeah. So it's kind of a nice contrast with like a really solid foundation with like some fancy symbol work. I think the signature, not that I'm consider myself like a drummer with the signature sound, but like the signature that I try to put on all my parts is just doing interesting things with symbols because symbols are like, I think my favorite part of the kit, honestly. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, it, um, it gives the track such like it adds to the etherealness of the track. Your symbol work on it. Thank you. And um, from a mixing perspective, I was so stoked on the sound we got because we just came in here with some pretty basic mics. Spent two days tracking drums. Um, I was standing right over there where the cameras are with my laptop. Uh, all the inputs were running into that. I was, in, I was just listening to what you're doing, was blown away. And then the next day, just did a quick mix. And I very intentionally did very little with the drums on all the tracks. Um, none of the, there's no reverb on any of the snares. Um, very minimal EQ. Yeah. Light compression on the drums, um, with the exception of that song, I pushed it a little bit more. Um, 
because I just I wanted to capture like what it felt like to be right here in the basement yeah. listening to the you play drums which I think is honestly how I always envisioned it too especially as like a debut EP uh-huh. don't want to dive too heavy into like a concept recording or do anything crazy from a studio perspective we just want to show people like kind of exactly what it sounds like when we had been jamming over the last couple months and I think you did super well with that honestly like yeah we didn't spend much time setting up the mics. We didn't fuck with the mics once they were set up. We had like one mic in the room that wound up pulling like really good room sound. And like I said before, the room wasn't treated at all. There's no baffling, there was no shielding. I tuned the drums a couple times, didn't change any heads, didn't do anything special. Yeah. Just did exactly like what we had been doing before and it paid off super well. The drums sound really true to how they sounded in the room when we tracked it. So Mm -hmm. super good job. Thank you. Yeah. And I, something in my mind then was like, I want, I wanted to produce something that would be easy to reproduce live that, you know, if someone comes to a show now that we've played a show yet, but hopefully one soon, um, that, you know, it would sound like the EP, what you heard on the EP probably even cooler because it's live but um yeah yeah i think so. in a lot of ways since we've just been jamming the song so much they've already kind of taken a new form for the live so mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see how we've changed certain things yeah cool number two masquerade masquerade all right so do you have any notes before going into this so this was born out of a riff that i've had for a long time and i used part of the riff in a song before a Savage Cabbage song, actually, that you know we just played a couple times live. Um, but I would always play the riff as sort of a finger exercise, warming up, and it was always one of my favorite riffs to play and fun. And um, we had been working on some Cadzo stuff already, like jamming a few songs, and I just felt like we needed one more to work off of. And I was just playing that in my room one day. I was like, oh, this could be a song. And I very quickly wrote a couple other parts for it. Um, I think it took just like one evening of just sitting in front of my computer, tracking a few different things. <coughs> and um, yeah, it came together. I sent you a demo. And then the next time we got together, we started jamming it and it came together really quickly. So I, I think um, for the recording process, this was probably the song we had played the least amount of times. Yeah. Um, but your... I think on this song, your drum part and the drum sound we got is my favorite on the entire EP. Hello. Well, the like the part, just how well it serves the riff. Which th- I the most interesting thing I have to say from a drum point of view is th- this part that's on the EP is like the first and only part that I ever wrote for this song, which almost never happens. Like, normally you'll play the riffs and I'll try like 10 or 20 different things Mm -hmm. and still not really know what I'm doing. But for this song, you started playing the riff and I immediately started playing what's on the EP and like it never changed at all. Yeah, just because it it felt so good Yeah, which is super uncommon for me specifically. I'm never usually that satisfied with the part. Um, and the other thing is this song has the biggest setup. So it's got the most symbols and the most drums. Mm -hmm. So I think that in some ways, especially because we tracked it probably like five or six times by the fourth or fifth time we were tracking it. I was really just like, fuck it. I'm going to do as, as much as I can through this. So yeah, yeah, it um it I I thought early on was like kind of the most um it had the most like commercial potential this song. It's kind of the most straightforward song on the album in terms of like conventional songwriting. But um it's still like it's it's weird in some ways. And uh, I, yeah, let's just play it. All right. I'll have more things to say as we as we listen. All right, let's go for it. Uh, 
I forgot. The the bass performance on this song is also incredible. Your bass tone and your bass performance is fucking outrageous. And we never ever talk about the bass on any of this well, because you just you tracked it once. But yeah, the bass performance on this is super good. I've always thank been you. super pleased by it. So thank you. Yeah, and um, I've when you when you started playing, I remember the first time we showed Will the song. He said it sounded like American football. Yeah. Which I never put together. Like, yeah, it does. Like, yeah. <laughs> kind of does. Yeah. But yeah, the bass. Um, you know, I'm all, I'm not a good bass player, but um, but you wrote a part that I mean, you wrote a bass part. Like, well, I mean, for all the songs, you wrote like real bass parts. But uh-huh. like, for this one, I mean, the bass is doing its own thing for like the entirety of the song, which is super cool. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was happy with it. so simple just three chords really um so I, yeah i just kind of put it in as a placeholder but it you know when we started playing it it worked well and, and it's and felt interesting good. the chorus of this song i think f- like floats and ha- almost like has more detachment mm-hmm. than like most choruses do there's like no snare there's i mean n- almost no low end it's mostly like the bass is moving up the fretboard, the guitar is moving way up the fretboard Mm -hmm. and keys are just like floating over the top. It's very much just like a detached chorus, which is sick as hell because I think had it been swapped for like what we were considering like more of a chorus, it would have definitely been super different. So yeah, definitely. Doing that fill and we looked at each other. Yeah, yeah. That's a great fill. I was trying to do kind of a almost like call and receive thing or um, whatever it's called with the guitar and bass here. We kind of play off each other, cool. I thought. Call and response. Call and response. Thank you. This part. So yeah, this <laughs> part, I guess, this is the one part of the EP that Benson did not retrack because uh-huh. your original version was so fucking sick that it's like, well, yeah. why try to emulate it? It's already perfect. This is the only time there's instrumentation on it that's not keyboard, guitar, bass, drum, vocals. Use it's a true. little, um, you know, synth stuff here. Um, but yeah, I, I um, had a new plugin that I was fucking around with and it had some cool string sounds on it. So I just um, spent some time just fucking around with different string parts and putting them all together and uh, turned into this this bridge, which I was happy with. It's very, very good. I did this guitar overlay as kind of an afterthought. I wasn't sure if I wanted it. I thought they added a cool layer to it. Yeah, yeah. it's very, very good. Yeah. 
their drums carry really well through there. The one thing I really like about this drum performance is I do feel like it's super uh, vulnerable in the sense that there's a lot of like imperfect hits. There's uh -huh. like some misses. You can even hear like a spot where I like hit the cymbal stand instead of the cymbal. Like I really like that all that stayed in the mix because it does contribute to the feeling of it being like a live in the room performance. And like, I mean, I don't want my, I'd way rather have like those imperfections in there that give to the character of the mix than have like clinically like perfect drums yeah, every single absolutely. time. So. And that goes back to like all of my favorite albums with, with a few exceptions do have a very like raw feel to them and you can hear mistakes or little flubs and um, it feels like music because yeah. it's, you know, that's what happens. It gives it, yeah, that extra boost of uh, like a personal character for yeah. sure. Like on that around little pitchy, could have easily you know pitch corrected or I had different takes, but I liked the like vulnerability, like you were saying. Yeah, of it. Mm -hmm. I think that's it works really well. <laughs> it works really well when we both do it together. Mm. It would make no sense in some ways if like your guitar and your vocals, well, I mean, fuck, your guitar is pretty much perfect throughout the whole thing. But it, if your vocals were like, yeah, clinically tuned to perfection and like squeaky clean and then my drums were like in the room and like you could hear all my flubs, then it would be mm. like, what the hell's the drummer doing? But like having it be an honest approach to the mix includes yeah all aspects of it being slightly vulnerable yeah so definitely oh dude why is that fucking always happening that camera did it die no it got too hot it overheated it's just a, it's, huh anyways so we have the other on one. one camera we're for on a bit one, no. all right that's all right um shall oh, we go on second, cool down yeah let's uh let's go on so wait for that camera well, here I'll uh, I'll talk about yeah we'll wait for that camera but um the the vocals on that song I struggled the most with just in terms of like writing a part and um, I had several different ideas several different versions of the vocals um, just through trial and error settled on that version and for a while I thought I had a take that I liked. And I was listening to it a bit. I was like, it's just not cutting it. So I, um, like in the middle of the day one day, just decided to retract the vocals. And I think I did, I think the, it, that entire take is just from one take I did that day. Maybe I changed out a few parts with the original vocal take. Um, but yeah, it's also kind of a, a different vocal style for me. Something different from what I was used to. Um, and uh, hitting some higher notes than I was used to, also. So yeah, the vocals on that one are definitely like more. Uh, well, we already said vulnerable, but like delicate in some ways. Yeah, like I think they delicate, yeah. they kind of yeah they kind of are just dancing like over the top of everything else in the mix, but they are like never cutting and they're never like digging they're very much just like wandering around mm -hmm. everything else that's happening in the song which is yeah like <coughs> again a super unique approach to the vocals and the fact that you're able to kind of capture two totally different singing styles in the first two songs of the ep is also super sick which most singers i feel like tie themselves down to the reservation of oh it always has to sound like my m myself singing it uh -huh. i always want to approach it like the same way but it's really cool to like leave that kind of attitude at the door and just literally fit like the song in the best way possible and I, I was worried about dark park and that song working together back to back like that and i had a, re a lot of reservations like does this even sound like the same band um, you know, does this work on the same EP? Who cares? Yeah, who cares? And but ultimately, like as I've been listening to the EP, I think it it does work. And um, 
yeah, it's, you know, definitely different vibe from song to song, but um, I think it sounds like the same band playing it. I would also say this song's probably like the least like the other songs. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely the least rocky of of the other songs, of, of, of all the songs, rather. Um, so, yeah, I think that's fair. The next song, probably the most rocking song. Yeah, which, again, not to like beat a dead horse, but Benson wrote like a, he wrote like a full on solo for this song that never yeah, which brought it to the next level. Brought it to the next level. Yeah. Similarly to when we had moments tracking drums where we were like looking at each other in certain times and be like, holy shit, this is awesome. When Benson first played what is on the EP now, we all looked at each other and we were just like, holy shit, I know. this I, is tight. <laughs> I remember the first time we played it, we finished and all just were laughing after like how epic his yeah. key part was. We were like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> like, <laughs> and I think it's Benson's favorite now because of that. I don't want to speak for him because he's not here, but yeah. if I could guess, I would guess he likes playing this one the most. Yeah, he really shines on this one. All right. Born on the outside. <laughs> So contrary to Masquerade, this song was the song I had the most drums for mm -hmm. because we had been jamming on this one for a long time. Yeah. Um, especially like the intro and the beginning of the song. We me and you like jammed on this, I feel like, as our warm up for a good bit, or like yeah. as our mid set break. Definitely. Um and the reason I think why this wound up going on this EP not to speak for like both of us, but it was, I think, probably the first song we jammed on when we st I started the idea of, like, Cadzo. And it was the first song that was, like, largely finished. Mm -hmm. And it was also the one that I think I personally feel like was the first, like, true separation from the previous group we were in together where yeah. I was like, this song is fucking sick. Yeah. And I want this song to be something that exists, but it doesn't fit the realm of like what's going on right now. And it's like, in some ways, if we dress it down to fit in a different universe, it's not going to be as good of a song. And so I'm glad we saved it. And I'm like, glad that we wound up like, I think both really using this as like the pivotal moment of like defining what, the group is and shit like that yeah for sure this was um yeah kind of the song that started it all yeah for us and um it, the first song we finished we really we came into Cadzo like having it finished pretty much really um and yeah we're jamming it and um it was a riff i had for a while obviously i'd shown you a long time ago and i was anxious to turn it into something and um if I if I had to pick a favorite song on the EP, or at least my favorite to play, um, you said this was Will's favorite to play, and it probably is my my favorite to play and sing as well. Um, and yeah, I think it represents where kind of what this group is about and like where we're trying to go. Definitely, and I also think out of all the songs that exist so far, this one probably sounds in my opinion, the most like the songs that are going to be on the posthumous album someday. Mm -hmm. Posthumous. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> when I die at 27, <laughs> as we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I 
I think this song kind of connects a lot of dots where like the other songs maybe are more unique like characteristic songs this one carries the thread of like what we're trying to do yeah definitely hell yeah my vocal part over this is the left originally i thought there wouldn't be any vocals over this but it felt weird not having vocals it just kind of cutting out so this was the last part i wrote and um i just mumbled this into the mic one day trying to come up with a melody and it like, oh, kind of works and, and just yeah, went, went the, from there the like talk style vocal yeah is like probably my favorite honestly ever i feel like when it's used for effect, like in, yeah, like bridge parts of songs or verse parts of songs, it's way more powerful than trying to be like, ah, la, 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 la. so yeah. yeah, it's super cool. Right on. the the infamous solo and so again i sorry i'm sorry benson's not here but he really did just like play that as it is structured and as it is phrased like spur the moment when we were jamming the song and then it was so good that i think he just went home and tracked it like right away yeah it Um, was the second time we jammed together i think he he played that almost note for note um maybe slightly different and then, uh, yeah, sent me the the demo of it, and um, I loved it when he played it live. But I don't think I fully appreciated it, like how epic it was, until I put it in the session and listened to it a couple of times. I was like, fuck, this is. And it's like guitar energy is climaxing right mm-hmm. there. Drum energy is climaxing right there, and he threw in a solo on top of it. So it's just like definitely a super epic moment yeah. as far as the EP is concerned. Yeah. All right, here we go. song. So, <laughs> do you want to tell the story of this song really quick? So, yep. I, the, the, I didn't want to pause it because the transition is cool, but um, the song has a pretty stupid story. <laughs> <laughs> this is a riff I've had since I <laughs> was 15 years old, probably. And um, I came up with the riff I was really into um, high life music, like um, African guitar players. And uh, I found out about it because I had heard that that was an inspiration for Johnny Marr. I mentioned Johnny Marr already. I was uh, obsessed and still am obsessed with Johnny Marr. And um, all I wanted was to be able to play guitar like Johnny Marr. So I <laughs> went back and listened to a lot of high life guitar players only to find out um, I re- listened to a recent interview with Johnny Marr. He never heard of High Life until like, you know, much later, later when people started saying he was inspired by it. Um, but anyway, so 
I, that was my attempt to like make a real like high life guitar part and it was just fun to play and catchy i thought and um my dream was to sell it to target for a commercial as soon <laughs> as soon as i started playing it i was like this would fucking kill in a target commercial define <laughs> define your that being your dream like that was your lifelong goal or like that was your goal was like this is how i'm gonna make some money <clears throat> as a as a 15 year old i was like i bet i can record this and give it to target and they'll put it in an ad <laughs> i'll be rolling in it because I, I was i watched two and a half men and um, Charlie Sheen's character, how he made money is he wrote jingles on that show. Right. I was like, I bet this would be a fucking killer jingle. And uh, I still stand by, I think it would be good in a, in a Target ad. And it's called Target Market because Target was my target market for the, <laughs> <laughs> for the song. Classic. Um, so I, I had it forever. It was, again, like one of those things I would play as like kind of a, a finger exercise because it's a little bit tricky to play and it helps warm up my fingers. And, um, uh, you know, we, in our former group, I started playing it and we, you know, would jam on it sometimes. And, um, yeah. Uh, but it had never like been an actual song. We never recorded it. Um, so it was my dream with Cadzo to finally record this song. And so we, we came into the group with boy on the outside, pretty much done. And then this song more or less done. Yeah. Which this song was for me, super easy to complete because it's the shortest song. And also n it was not exactly the first part I wrote, but the first thing I did was pretty similar to what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. And it was literally just do the simplest, most like danciest shit possible. It serves Lightest it so shit well possible. though. Yeah. It's and a light so touch. Yeah. After, yeah. A couple fine, fine tweaks. It was like, Oh yep. My part's there. I'm done. I'm yeah. ready to track. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you probably, I think on all the songs you lay down your drums in, three or less takes, I want to say. You maybe did four on one take, but we probably didn't even need the fourth. I think on this song, you maybe did two, and I probably just used the first take anyways. Yeah, the first take was like the money take. Yeah. And that's only the second time in like my entire recording career that I've, that I've used a first take, but it was really just like I was feeling slap happy uh -huh. from the recording, and I was feeling rather fearless as in nothing I did was stupid behind the kit at that point. So I just did whatever I wanted, which wasn't much. Like it's not a complicated thing that I did, but it was very much just like, uh, yeah, I wanted it to be fun and light. And I think that I was feeling pretty light <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> at that time. So, yeah. Um, and I, for guitar too, I remember stressing, just since, because it's a riff I've had forever and have played so often, I was like a little stressed. Like oh, I'm finally laying it down. Like I've played this so many times with so many different amps and guitars. Like I really got to find the right sound for it. So I laid down the scratch take just for you to do drums to. But the more I listened to, it, I was like, I think the scratch take is it. You know? <laughs> yeah. So like the the guitar on it too is just my. I maybe did that in two takes. And it, it was intended to just be the scratch take, but it worked so well together. I just, I kept that around. Super cool. And it's the last song on the EP. So yeah, closes her down. Let's do it. Here we go. And you're about to hear Will's key part come in. This was another song where we will play it the first time. We were like, what? Badass. <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> so badass. Yeah. Because we were debating even having keys on the song Yeah, in we the didn't first know if place. keys would fit. And then he did some. He did it just, again, fucking around. He's like, I'm just going to see what I can do. And then he played it largely how it is now. And Yeah, and keys perfect. honestly really steal the show. Yeah, like, well, and the way that he in my opinion, finds sounds that are like perfect for each scene. Yeah. It's like, wow, that I would have never found that or like really 
pictured it fitting in, but the way that he does it, it fits in perfectly. Every Especially time. the part where we're gonna hear in a second. Keep playing. We'll point it out. This part. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. So, you wrote that riff when you were 15? Yeah. When did vocals come into the picture? At the 11th the hour. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was intended to be an instrumental track. But then uh, I'm debating how much I, I should say here. It was going to be a I transition might, track, right? Or am yeah. I making that up? No, it was, it was just going to kind of be, yeah, exactly. Kind of in the middle of the EP, like fade in, fade out. Um. All right. Well, that's the EP. I think... We've mostly covered like the tracking and the mixing. Do you have anything you want to add to it? I think the only thing I'd really add at this point is just that as far as like drum and granted it was only four songs, but how drum recording usually is, it's like tooth and nail fucking just fighting to get something and this is like the easiest drum session I've ever done outside of just trying to track for demos and yeah. uh I didn't do that much. I played the drums and I helped set up some of the microphones, but I didn't do any of the mixing. I didn't do any of the overall like production. So you knocked it out of the park. And I think as far as yeah, like a basement recording goes with the homies, it's like super, super good and it'll stand up. So thanks bro. Proud of you. Proud of you. The drums are incredible. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, dude. Good up. Good up. Um, Thanks for potential listeners out there. And uh, we'll see you next week on Podcadzo. Podcadzo. <laughs> <laughs>